We've got some hey, fresh I'm new Luis. talent. Hey, I'm Luis. And I'm Luis. And you're listening before. to the Content is Profit One, two, three, Podcast. Listen. Yo, 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 what's up, guys? Welcome back to Content is Profit. Fonsi, how you doing today? Good. Just good? I'm doing good. Say amazing. I'm doing good. <laughs> I'm ready to talk. Okay, I got a text. I got a text from our dear cousin that we've been telling him to launch a podcast for how long? A couple of years now. Give more context. I'm what is he doing? I'm to you. Why a podcast for him? <laughs> well, originally, you know, he, uh, well, he is an actor. He's been in, in uh, a few shows. He's been on commercials. He produced his own short films, you know, incredible. And uh, the reason we decided to recommend a podcast was so he could connect with more people in the industry, more directors, more casting directors, you know, people of influence, and uh, connect, build a relationship with them and hopefully uh, land some new parts through those relationships, right? Because obviously we've seen the podcast as a way to to do that and it's helped us, you know, move our vi- business forward the last few years. Um, and now he's into a new new stage. He's been helping a lot of people with like his fitness. You know, obviously he, he eats very healthy, he exercises and he's been helping a few people and he wants to explore that route too. And now he's coming back to the idea of a podcast. <laughs> so he sent me a text be like, hey, Luis. And this was like Friday, 7 p.m. <laughs> uh, how do I turn this like horizontal video into vertical video? Uh, I'm working on my podcast, on my personal brand on, in, in my social media. And uh, at the time I was in an event with my kids and I was like, send me a list of all your questions and, and we'll answer them in a video. So Victor, here's us. Uh, here is us answering that. But with the preface of, you know, as we're walking out, Fonzie, you, you mentioned a couple of elements, right? That we should be looking at before we even look at options to how to transform <laughs> long form horizontal video into maybe vertical clips. Uh, that might be a little bit more important than just the technical aspect of doing that, right? Mm-hmm. Which are? Wait, sorry, <laughs> actually, I got, a really, I got a really good idea and I'm writing it down here. Okay. Um, okay, so here, before while Fonzie writes his idea, right, like, uh, you know, obviously we <laughs> sorry. see- no, You no. know, I, t- I talk a lot about documenting <laughs> and like catching your ideas at the moment when they happen. And I don't know if you noticed, but I was like looking into nothingness and the ideas was forming in my head. I, so I wrote it down in here. So clearly Fonzie does not pay attention All to right. what I'm saying. Keep going, I'm back in the conversation. <laughs> okay. So obviously, you know, in modern media, right? And if you haven't listened to the previous episode, go listen to it because we talk about the political campaigns and how they're using long form and podcast episodes to, you know, help gain some audience. But obviously we see long form sh- episodes. We see short form, you know, vertical video, talking heads, all these influencers, teaching, entertaining, like all these things. And uh, and as a consumer, we might be excited to try something like that, right? Or mimic a format or model or even copy sometimes. And we have a great episode on, you know, why you should not be copying content. <laughs> um, and we go, Fonsi goes on a, on a big rant on that episode, which I, which I love. I love how you get passionate sometimes. Sure. Anyways, sometimes. I ramble. Uh, but, you know, sometimes when we sit down to the actual work of getting the content done out properly, it might seem very intimidating, right? And that's why we see a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of business owners, uh, or even creators, right? That they start something and then they don't, they cannot stay consistent. And we raised our hands. That was us for many years, right? We've, we've helped people that have been in that, that train for quite a while as well. So, um, that's the premise, right? It's like, okay, what are the things that we should be looking at even before trying to, you know, uh, edit the video the right way I'm doing air quotations, um, as we move forward. Stop kicking the lights. Why are you kicking the lights? I'm moving it, bro. <laughs> I'm helping you. We need, we need to, uh, we already talked about it. We're going to do a lighting workshop out here. Sure. Um, but what are the things we need to look even before we get started? Is that what you meant? What you said? Yeah. Well, a few things come to mind, Red. Maybe the things I wish I would have known before we got started was first kind of like resource management, right? Um, and also tuning out some of the noise because there's a lot of advice out there. And honestly, I'm not saying it's bad advice, but it might just not be relatable to where you are at the moment, right? Everybody's different in terms of how much time they have, how much money they got to invest in a certain task, how their skill set that they have, right? All these different things. So first I would look into what are the resources that I can, you know, put into a specific task or a specific project. So if I want to launch a podcast, I would 
potentially start with getting an account of what is the time that I have available to create this piece of content, right? And then I would go through the production process and say, okay, well, producing one episode is taking me X amount of hours, right? Do I count with those amount of hours to actually do the do the work? And if I don't, do I have enough money to maybe outsource it, et cetera? So like, I would just take account of what are my resources. But then obviously we always talk about the quality of the message over quality of the production. Mm-hmm. So I would make sure that I nailed down my message, right? Like who am I talking to specifically what problem I'm solving, right? And I nail it down and we truly don't know whether your message is good or not until you put it out there and test it out into the world, right? Like talking to people that have those problems, do they resonate? Do they convert into more conversations, right? That lead to more opportunities. So it's not about just sitting down and writing down like, yes, this is my message. You got to go and test it out, which is going to take resources. It's going to take time, time yeah. and money. All right, but those were th- those would be the first two things that I would start, right? Like, where am I going to put my resources? And all, obviously, like, what is it that I want to do? All right, because based on your, you know, Stephen Covey in the seven habits of whatever the highly effective people people, that is (laughs) the seven habits of highly effective people I think the last one or maybe the first one I don't even remember now one of his habits is start with the end in mind and that is such a good habit specifically for business too which is okay what is the goal Where, where do I want to go and then you can break it down into smaller chunks smaller goals and you can move up from there right so yeah. i think that is a great spot to start for example when we started the podcast we're like okay well our goal is just to to publish it right but we don't really have too much time to edit we don't we want to test the message we have a message but we want to test it out we want to get more reps and we have limited amount of time because we do have a service that we provide on the side that takes more most of our time doing the fulfillment yeah so what we did was well to get the message out consistently we need to do it multiple times a week and to avoid the whole production, we're just going to do it live, right? Mm-hmm. So pretty much we were dedicating one hour per episode, yeah. right? Maybe to say hour and a half, two hours per episode. And we we're doing it three times a week. If we would have only focused on one super high quality episode at the moment, where well, we wouldn't, you know, first we would have have less opportunity to test our message. And second, we would invest a lot of our time just into one episode that again our message wasn't tested we didn't know if it was going to resonate and whatnot so yeah you know i think that was our approach on you know having an end in mind and then starting that way and then eventually as the podcast grew we managed to increase resources and now we can drop them back into the podcast and have a better product and what one question i would urge you to to ask yourself is like do you do you enjoy the idea of creating the way that you want to create, right? Uh, it's like the process. We have this story where we had this old business. It was a screen printing business. And uh, we had this machine in, in the garage of our house. It was, we're in Florida, right? So super hot in the afternoons. And we thought of the idea of owning a t-shirt company as a very fun idea with events and do this. And the second we started selling bigger orders, like 300 shirts that we had to print, the process became a nightmare, right? We did, we hated every second of it of, you know, created this, you know, the screens. And then because we're using a certain type of ink, it would dry up and then it, it will stick and we had to re- redo the whole process. So just a, a run will take us a bunch of hours and we were sleep deprived, fighting with our roommates, all these things. And then we decided to, to stop that business because we didn't enjoy the process so i see that same thing with a lot of creators and you see like these cases on youtube where you have creators that have been creating this very specific type of content because maybe that's what resonated with an audience that they thought you know they were serving uh, at a point right and they kept reacting to what their audience wanted and then they end up creating this flow that they don't really enjoy and then they get to burn out, for example, right? So are you truly enjoying it? Like it's the people, are the people in your company enjoying the creation process, right? Do they really want to go into a YouTube heavy video production type or do they enjoy more conversational content where they can sit down and talk with leaders in in the world, whatever, right? Whatever that, that is, do you actually enjoy it? Because that's going to help you stay consistent for a longer period of time. We enjoy this time together. We enjoy bringing guests into our show, right? We the, It fills up 
with energy and that's what we do it i don't think that's one of the main reasons of why being able to keep the consistency going once you have that base once you continue to work on your message then you can start adding these pieces on production ways like okay how can we get better footage how can we look better how can we maybe do an edit that serves the message right yep. uh, how can we hire a production manager that can help us out right and we start asking all these questions and again if you want to start from scratch like some companies do with a higher production value because that's their belief and maybe they have to maintain that level of quality at some point, uh, then consider that it might be a steeper learning curve, right? Or it might be uh, a bigger investment in the team that's going to get you there, right? And I think that's where I always recommend, you know, start creating organically, you know, yourself and see if that's a format that you really like to like to do. And, you know, with, with our cousin, shout out to, to Victor, for example, like he's documenting a lot of his, you know, day to day because he's already working out. He's already doing this thing. So in his main social media platform, he's documenting these things live and uh, he puts content out there. People are having conversations with him. And then this is encouraging him to continue to create just like this podcast did for us. So I yeah. think those elements are super important for you to you know take account and yeah. it, i think it's very easy to get distracted too with the technical aspects of things right like he his question was like all right like i'm creating this type of content how do i turn it into vertical and all this stuff and i mean depending on the type of person that you are right but i know personally that for me those technical challenges then become into rabbit holes would then become into distractions. So I would go and be like, all right, how do I turn this into this? Oh, I need a video editing software. Let me go. Oh, I downloaded the video editing software. Let me learn every <laughs> single aspect of it that I'm never going to use, but I still need to know how it works. <laughs> right? And I go on a deep, different rabbit hole. And it's like, oh, let me make cinematic uh, movies, Wh whatever, all these things. Right. And at the end of the day is just distractions that are taking you farther away from your original goal. So keep that in mind. If you're that type of person that does that, right? And again, there's nothing wrong on learning new skills, nothing wrong on trying to attempt to do the things uh, by yourself, right? But keep in mind, you know, maybe ask yourself, is this the best use of my time, right? Yeah. Because if not, it might be just better to, you know, at the lowest level, go on Fiverr or Upwork and hire somebody to do that one specific task for you, so you can put your attention into what's going to yield the highest results, right? So for example, you know, in retrospect, maybe for us, where we yield the highest, you know, source of value from our podcast is investing our time into inv in inviting new guests, right? Of the right caliber into content is profit, right? Rather than let's spend our time multi-purposing the content, right? Like for that, we have a team, we have a team that is doing that aspect, which is important, right? Because it's distribution. But for us, it's more important building the relationships that we're going to bring into the podcast. So guess what? Sometimes you're going to have to choose. Sometimes you're going to have to decide whether do I really need these clips or do I, you know, <laughs> invest into meeting people and bringing them into the show, you know, and maybe again, every case is different, but for you, depending on what your priorities are, what your goal is, what yields the most value, it might be bringing new people, right? Connecting with people or for you, it might just be, you know, distributing the content in multiple channels. So again, get clear on what is your goal, what you're going to do. And then based on that, you can backtrack and see what are your priorities, right? You need to prioritize, yeah. you know, specific actions so you can get where you want it to be. And I think it's very easy to get lost again on, you know, I need to post all this content and multi-purpose my content and do X, Y, and C just because a lot of big people with big names with very successful platforms are doing it that way. But guess what? There's not one way to do certain things, right? I remember growing up where that used to say all the time, like, uh, all paths lead to Rome. That was like a saying that he would say all the time. And, you know, looking back into it, like, it's the same thing, like Rome is the goal, like that's where we're going, but there's no one single path to do so, right? Like there's people that grow podcasts through, you know, BOPA, borrowing other people's audiences, or there's people that grow their podcasts through advertising, or there's people that grow it organically. There's many different ways to achieve one single goal. Yeah. So again, taking care of your, you know, 
taking into consideration your resources that you have at hand, the goal, you know, that place where you want to be. And obviously you as a creator, how you like to create and do things, then you can pick the right path for you. And at the end of the day, you do need to stay consistent with what you do, at least long enough to have tangible results that can let you decide whether, yes, I want to go and follow in this path, right? I'm gonna keep going is, is offering steady growth. Or if it's not growing, you can pivot and say, okay, I'm going to do plan B, right? I have this hypothesis that if I do X, Y, and C is gonna yield these results. And then you go and try that until you have measurable results and then can form yeah. another decision. Yeah, I think a good way to look at it is imagine it's a science experiment, right? And uh, you have the hypothesis that you think is going to be true, test it out uh, for a fixed period of time, and then you decide it's a good thing to continue or not and move things forward. Um, and then, you know, as we wrap up, we are going to answer Victor's question <laughs> on how to turn the horizontal yeah, we're video. Just gonna send them, we're just going to send them this clip. <laughs> into, into short form, right? So uh, so his, his original question is like, how do I do to turn a video that I originally recorded for YouTube that's horizontal into vertical? And, you know, so we can put it on reels or in shorts and different things like that. So with that said, there's a few applications that you can do. So a lot of, obviously, any editing software, you can change the format of the video itself but like Fonsi said there's a learning curve for each one of them one that we use that I personally love because I'm not that technical it's called Descript uh, we're going to put the link right below Fonsi obviously any Adobe product can do it um, there's also our partner company Capture, which just released a clipping feature which you literally put the video file in there and on top of uh, giving you a lot of copy for like your podcast description or your YouTube video description and, and social media posts and different things. Uh, it extracts some video clips from it and it gives you headlines and captions as well. It's actually amazing what they're able to do. Uh, and obviously there's, if you Google how to multi-purpose or, you know, do content online that way, there's going to be a thousand uh, companies <laughs> that have popped up with this new AI that can do something similar. But uh, on our specific case, if you, I mean, we do that as a service, um, a little bit to, you know, high end podcast, but we're happy to help you in part of the process. If you want to learn it, just send us a quick message and we're happy to hop on a call with you and kind of walk you through, through our process is what we've done the last five years. So, uh, the second question that he answered is, uh, is there an app on the iPhone? So this is, I think a very good question because a lot of people might not have a higher quality camera or maybe even a laptop, right? To like that, that can process that, that amount of footage. But these little machines that we have here have incredible quality when it comes to video, audio, and different things. There's an application that I personally love. It's called Captions uh, that can do something very similar. And on top of that, it facilitates the way that you can edit those social clips, right? You can add different formats. I mean, to a point that they have, I think, a feature that does a very highly edited production value like <laughs> clip. And when I sent it to Fonzie, it's like, man, this is pretty impressive that a machine can do this automatically. Uh, but then there's did also, you yeah, I did. You were like, you, you mentioned the name of a, of an effect that I didn't really know what it was. Mm. Uh, you're like, Oh, it's crazy that it can do that effect. Uh, but there's another editing tool that I personally don't use, but I've seen it all around social media. It's called CapCut, uh, which is an editor that was born for, uh, your phones. But again, like everything is going to have a learning curve if you yeah. haven't experienced anything like this. So our advice, if this is the first time of you turning long form content into short form, identify a few ideas from those ideas, which are the message that resonates, then you can use either Capture, which we're going to leave the links right below, or Descript if you want to process it that way. And uh, put those clips out there, the, put the, the talking head with some subtitles that you like and see what happens. Do people, are people reacting to it? Is it a polarizing idea? Is it not a polarizing idea? Are you enjoying the process of learning and, and improving every single time? And uh, let us know what happens. Yeah, let us know. <laughs> Why not? I mean, sure. I have, uh, I have beef with that, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, we already talk about that in different contents, you know, structure. There's multiple things that I don't, you know, again, I would go back and look at what are your goals? Where is your uh, attention and efforts best placed at? 
and then go from there. You know, like I would actually challenge you with a question. Are you just multi-purposing content just because other podcasts are multi-purposing content, right? Again, if the answer is yes, ask yourself, well, why? Why do I need to do it that way? Right? There's Again, there's different paths to the same goal that you can take and depends on your resources, it's probably going to be a little bit different. Awesome. All right. With that said, guys. Yeah. Thank you so much for tuning to the Contents Profit Podcast. Go ahead and follow the show in your favorite podcasting platform and on social media at Base Bros Co. That is right. In today's episode, help you move one step closer towards your goal. Please don't forget to share this episode. And of course, don't forget to leave a five-star review. See ya. Bye, guys. <laughs>